I, uh, my parents recently uh, moved uh, from Princeton, New Jersey, where I grew up, to Washington, D.C., um, to be grandparents near their grandchildren. And they asked me to come home and clean out some, of, some boxes of shit before they threw them away. And I found uh, this, which is my uh, high school uh, literary magazine, The Cheshire Cat. <laughs> and in my senior year, I was the editor-in-chief. So, I, I'm just saying that I was the editor-in-chief. So, it's kind of a pretty big honor, so. I, rem I wanted to just read some of this just because I can't even believe that, that I, this is me, but it was me. This is some of the introduction. I thought I'd read you some of my introduction. A youthful voice can be eloquent, musical, impassioned, and gracious. <laughs> Yet it can also be coarse, angry, vulgar, and acrimonious. Tells me I must have been studying for the SAT. <laughs> In this cat, we don't need to say the whole thing. We all know what we're talking about. We have tried to represent the poems in a generic and simple graphic set. We have done this in emulation of the great poetry journals published by the Beats in the late 1950s. By the way, there is no we, it was just me. I'm talking like I had a whole staff of people running around making deadlines. It's just me. We had to read each piece at least twice before the quality and meaning hit us. God, that is so impressive, Michael. God, I am really blown away by your diligence. We strongly recommend that you do the same. The cat this year lacks a certain happiness, and for this, we must apologize. It seems that the only grin you'll find in this book is the one that remains when the Cheshire cat's body has fully disappeared. <laughs> I'm a writer! Yes! All right, so I wrote this poem uh, and submitted it to the, to, the, to the cat, and it got in. Amazingly, it got in. So I wrote this poem, which I thought was like me being a hardcore poet, and I remember reading it to my mother, and I remembered that when I read it to her then, she laughed. <laughs> which I was very upset about at the time, but rereading it now, I think I maybe understand a little bit better. The name of the poem is The Apartment Building, and the setting seems to be a, 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 an urban environment, which is strange. I grew up in Princeton, New Jersey. Um, I did be, go to New York a few times to see Broadway shows. Uh, such as Annie and the Tap Dance Kid. <laughs> the apartment building. There is a whore in my apartment building. Her room smells like dirty sex. I was a virgin when I wrote this, by the way. There is a man next door who reads the comics. His idea of a hero is a hand job and a beer. <laughs> there is a dog in that man's room. His name is Asshole and he smells like piss. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Mom? <laughs> there is also a woman in that man's room. She cleans and gets fucked. <laughs> I'm spilling my guts out here, Mom. <laughs> Across the courtyard, a couple lives. He's an actor, she's an actress. They can't find work, so they steal from the market. <laughs> Suddenly, we're in a cash. <laughs> They're breaking the law. I smoked a reefer with them. <laughs> they didn't know shit about fuck. <laughs> I liked them. I used to be like that. A manuscript lies on a naked mattress that lies in the corner of my two-room apartment. It has a coffee stain on it. 
The publishers and editors have fucked it to hell. A six-string guitar rests against a chair in my room. It has only three strings. I'm strung out on dope. Next door to me, a young man is writing pamphlets. They are anti-Semitic. But for Christ's sake, that man is a Jew. A guy lies on a flat surface smoking a cigarette. I lie dead in my bathtub. The end. Thank you, everybody. You've been a great audience. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you.